looking at a couple different things I'll be testing out today. So one is this old surplus German helmet. It's made of Kevlar. There's the old name. This, I don't know, for those of you who are interested of the soldier, I guess, that had it. And here's the inside information. Hopefully you can see that. It's uh, made in, it looks like 95, I think is what it has on there. If you know what that means, you know, let me know. Pretty sure it says 95. Um, but anyways, it's either an 80s or a 90s helmet. It is made of Kevlar. Got the thing off uh, sportsmansguide.com a while back and I spray painted it black because everyone goes through that phase. And then um, I'm cleaning out a room to make room for a second kid. So all this stuff needs to go and I figure I might as well shoot it. Here's an old Bulgarian um, steel helmet, you know, Cold War era. I think it's 70s if I remember right. It might be 80s, I don't remember. But I'm gonna be shooting that with pistols just to see if it'll stop any pistol rounds. I just bought a, I just brought a nine mil and a 45. I have a feeling it might stop the 45. I don't think it'll stop the nine, but I just kinda wanna test that. I also bought a whole bunch of old plate carriers that I got either from work or from, uh, actually a couple of these came from Goodwill. Someone turned in their old uh, body armor, I guess, uh, Goodwill for whatever reason. So that's where some of these came from. Uh, all of them are expired, um, but I've shot expired vests in the past and they work just fine. So uh, I'm gonna layer all these up and see uh, how many layers of Kevlar it takes, or 3A uh, body armor it takes to stop rifle rounds, just cause I'm curious. So let's get to it. Now I am gonna be standing behind the camera a good ways cause I don't know what exactly is gonna happen uh, whenever I shoot the steel one. The Kevlar one should basically absorb the round and not worry about it ricocheting. Don't know about the steel, uh, we'll see. I'll try to get a better angle. Also, I'm gonna shoot, if this uh, the surplus Kevlar one over there stops uh, pistol rounds like a modern 3A helmet does, um, I'm going to put it out at different ranges and shoot it with 5.56 and uh, different loads and possibly 308 at, you know, all the way out to, you know, four or five, 600 yards um, until I can get it to stop a rifle round because I'm curious at what distance or what velocity it'll stop a rifle round. All right, so hopefully you can see this bulge in there. There we go, get the sun. All right, so there's the back face deformation. It's honestly maybe a half inch of height. It's not, you know, it's not too bad. Um, that's about what I would expect with a modern helmet and with this padding. I will say the Germans have a uh, cool system in here with this mesh. Um, it's actually a very, very comfortable helmet. Um, it's honestly more comfortable than my uh, long pride ballistic helmet. Um, but with that, how it was, I don't think it would have impacted your head. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So it does stop. I'm not going to bother shooting it at 45 because I don't want to compromise it. Uh, I want to shoot it with rifle rounds if it'll stop the 9mm, it'll stop uh, 45. So let's shoot the uh, Bulgarian, kind of see how it does over there. Okay, well, that's impressive. It stopped it. This angle is absolutely horrendous. All right, the sun is in a terrible location. That actually stopped it. Now it did hit the rim. I'm gonna shoot it one more time and see if it'll stop around because that's, that's impressive. I honestly expected it to go through. Again, that's 115 grain stuff. Um, let's shoot it one more time. I wanna see what happens. There we go. Now that is what I was expecting to happen and I didn't hit you know exactly where this other one was but that metal was probably you know fatigued a little bit because I think the crack came from there but it did punch through so you know there's for what it's worth these aren't you know rated to stop pistol rounds but the fact that it stopped the first one is kind of impressive honestly um, I expected it to go through so is this helmet better than nothing yes um, will it stop shrapnel sure will it stop handgun rounds eh, maybe depends on where it hits it um, anyways, I thought that was interesting. Uh, it'll be on slow-mo, so you can kind of see that, but I just thought that was cool. Uh, I might shoot this with rifle rounds too. I haven't decided yet, but I just thought that was kind of cool. Uh, let's shoot it with 45 ACP in slow-mo, just because I want to see what it looks like on camera. All 
All right, 45 ACP. <laughs> um, you're gonna have a headache. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? Yeah, I dented in the, uh, the metal brackets that hold it in. I don't, I don't know if you can see that. Nearly impossible to see that in there, but the entire inside is dented. Uh, so I'll do it again in slow-mo because I forgot to do it in slow-mo this time, and we'll look at it in slow-mo. All right, so what I learned today, here's the second round for 45 ACP. It's not as bad as the, uh, the first one was. What I learned today is having this helmet on would be better than nothing. Um, but as you can tell right here, that's actually a piece of metal um, of the ribbing that goes around that holds everything in place. So you're going to have a bad day, but you might survive getting shot with those. I've had worse. You lie. Come on. You can see there's rivets coming out. Um, that one, you, you might survive that, honestly, with uh, your, your skull because this one didn't go through. And that one, I think, just barely made it through. That's why it cracked the metal. It didn't just zip through. And I think it was also weakened a little bit maybe by this. Could be wrong. Uh, but, you know, would I rather have this than nothing? Absolutely. Because I'm curious, I'm going to shoot a uh, 147 grain 308. So, <laughs> 308. Entry. Exit. Look! Just a flesh wound. So, that's nice. That peeled that sucker all the way back. I can only assume, based on the angle, yeah, it came out, obviously, well, it went through the metal brace in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that inside there is actually the metal, like, uh, bracket or whatever you want to call it that holds, it's riveted to hold on the, the uh, suspension system. It went through that, so there's actually metal. It went through two layers of metal on the inside, this layer, and this layer, and kept going into the dirt. So, that's fun. All right, so here we are at 400 yards, hanging by some uh, a bungee cord. But you can see there's the helmet. The, the nine millimeter hole is on the bottom side back here where you can't see, so it has the best chance of stopping something. So let's see if I can hit it, 400 yards. So here I'll show you this helmet a little bit up close um, with a little bit better lighting, hopefully, as you can see. Here's a nine millimeter round, it stopped. This is all a bunch of shrapnel from the steel plate that I shot next to this thing. Um, and some of this did actually go in, so that's kind of cool to see that it stopped all that. Here is a 77 grain round. Um, again, this was fired at 400 yards. Another 77 grain 5.56 round, also fired at 400 yards. And a 308 round that, as you can tell, went right through, also fired at 300, or 400 yards. Um, in case you want to see what this looks like on the inside, there's your 308 round that went through. Uh, there's your 77 grain 5.56. Made a decent little dent, but didn't go through. Your nine millimeter round. There's a bulge right there, did not go through. And the other one, which is on the side, you may not, you probably won't be able to see this one. Um, maybe you can see down in there a little bit. It ripped the material on the inside, but it did not go through. So this test kind of already confirmed what I already knew in layman's terms or a generality is if your round that you're getting shot with um, or that you're shooting you know this type of armor with is going around 2,000 feet per second or faster um, at whatever point it makes contact with this it's probably going to go through if it's going under 2,000 feet per second it probably won't now um, rifle rounds that are you know a little bit more pointy um, will defeat it a little bit better than like pistol rounds that are a little bit more blunt that's just kind of the nature of the game um, but if you're shooting 5.56 five, to 55 grain stuff at 400 yards, I guarantee you it would go through this uh, because I shot the 55 grain stuff at a just a regular 3A vest. You can watch that at 300 yards out of an 11 and a half inch barrel. And because it was going so slow, it didn't go through here. Um, but whenever I shot the with a longer barrel at you know longer ranges, whenever that round is, still has higher velocities over 2,000 feet per second, it would zip through something like and that. And as you've seen in some of my previous videos, I shot an AK round, which is more or less the same um, as the 308 round that I shot, the Warden 47 grain, the AK round's a little bit lighter, but I mean, in all intents and purposes, they're both 30 caliber. They're both, you know, about the same size. Um, but the reason why the 308 went through this when the AK round did not is velocity. The AK round at that point is going under 2,000 feet per second versus the 308 round at 400 yards, it's still going over 2,000 feet per second. So 
is this anything new? No, but it's just kind of interesting to see that. Um, it is interesting to see the difference between a 77 grain and a 55 grain. Generally, the 77 grain, you know, has better ballistics uh, whenever it hits tissue. Um, it carries that energy farther, you know, longer distances. Uh, so the round is more effective at farther ranges. Now it does have more, I don't want to say drop, but it does travel slower. So technically it has a little bit more drop. Um, it has a better ballistic coefficient, so that's good. Um, one thing that the 55 grain though has over the 77 grain is it will penetrate, you know, soft armor or helmets at longer ranges. So that is a consideration, you know, potentially. Again, I thought this was an interesting test. I mainly just wanted to chuck this helmet because I've been using it, um, just kind of, well, basically it's just been collecting dust for the past little while and I'm clearing out this room where I store everything to make room for another kid. So I figure I might as well shoot all this stuff and just kind of see what happens. And again, nothing really new here, but it is kind of interesting just to see. So again, you know, if whatever you're shooting still has around 2000 feet per second or higher at whatever range it's going to be at, um, it'll probably penetrate soft armor and or helmets. So if you appreciate this kind of content, let me know. Um, I just decided to shoot a bunch of different ballistic things. I also have a military surplus riot shield that I don't think would stop anything more than like birdshot or 22s. But if you're interested in seeing me shoot one of those, I have two of them. I might shoot that. But again, I don't think it would actually stop anything. So it would probably just be a waste of your time. But if you're interested, let me know. I'll take one to the range and shoot it up with stuff. But anyways, I hope you all have a good one.